Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just did a whole bunch of repotting that was in a vlog that came out, I think the video prior to this one. No, a couple weeks ago. Anyways, in that video, I potted up this pseudoranthemum, pseudoranthemum black varnish, and uh, I debated a whole bunch of things in the video. None of that matters. You can watch the video if you're curious about it. I need to cut this plant because it's gotten kind of long and linky looking and I thought this would be a good time to talk about it. This plant is Pseudoranthemum black varnish. That's the name of this one. That's the culture they've come up with. I picked this one up in the springtime. It was just in a little, like a four or six inch pot and I potted it down in the Adenidia palm, which is right behind the, it's behind the, you can kind of see it behind the plant. So with winter coming, I wanted to go ahead and pull that out of the pot that that Adenidia is in this Adenidia or Christmas palm. This one goes off to a greenhouse during the winter time and they don't take care of the plants that are planted with the palm tree. They only guarantee the palm tree. They don't even really guarantee the palm tree, but if they kill it, they'll replace it. Whole point there being, I had to lift that plant out of the pot and the pot there is mostly roots. It's a big palm tree. I was only able to get a small root ball out, which is, so far, been fine. Plant seems okay with it. Got it potted up in a nice moisture retentive soil and I've kept it moist at all times. I haven't let that soil dry out one bit. These plants don't like to dry out. And if you're tearing up the roots, it's even more important to not let them dry out or ideally like just not tear up the roots. That's even better. I thought it'd be nice though to just show the plant and all of its shiny glossy glory before I cut it back. I do need to cut this back, right? It's looking pretty wonky, has some linky growth on it. It would be much better to give this a prune. So this isn't necessarily a care video because I've only had this plant for a few months and it's been years since I've grown any other pseudoranthemums. And if I haven't had a plant for at least a year, I don't usually like to talk a ton about the care because I like to be able to offer my own perspectives. This is more of a spotlight on the pseudoranthemums and just how they're awesome plants. There are so many awesome types of pseudoranthemums. It's a fairly good sized family of plants that you find down around, I think like Polynesia, South Pacific area around the islands. They're a very tropical plant. They like things moist and humid and warm. And they're pretty dang easy to grow. At least the black varnish has been. And then the one I had years ago, it was a like a lighter variegated one. It was also pretty easy to grow outdoors. Never grown this particular type of pseudoranthemum inside. So this winter is going to be a fun experiment with that, which is another reason why I need to give this that prune. So I want to make sure that it gets its roots spread out and it has enough going on down there to keep stored and keep itself alive. There's a lot of plant here to support on such a small root mass. So best to get that pruned up. You can see why I like this plant, right? Just from looking at it, that foliage. It's so beautiful and shiny and it's had a lot of variation throughout the season. While I've been growing this, there have been times when it's been more of a lighter pale color and sometimes it is almost all black. And right now it's kind of a Merlotish red color, at least the new growth is. And that's all likely just because of changes in sunlight where I had this planted back here in that container, the sun shifts throughout the season. So late spring, it wasn't getting a ton of sun, but it was getting enough, getting some morning sun. Then throughout the summer, it was getting sun all the way until mid afternoon. And then as we've moved into fall, it started to uh, dial back and not get quite as much light. Like a lot of plants with dark foliage, the more light it gets, the darker that foliage seems to be. I'm sure temperature would also play a role in some of the coloration, obviously on the growth with the plant, but these really don't like to go very cool. From everything I know and remember about them, 60 degrees is about as low as they want to go. Now this has already spent a couple nights in the 50s. We had a cold snap come through here and it hasn't skipped a beat. It's been fine. And from everything that I do recall and remember and have read about pseudoranthemums and my experience growing this one, the lighting, they they can take variable lighting similar to a coleus. So I have seen some websites that say don't give them direct sunlight. This one has gotten some pretty intense light and been fine. I don't know what they're talking about, but there are different varieties. So Potentially there are some that really maybe don't like it. From all the types that I've looked at, most of those are listed as part shade to part sun. So there you have it. Indoors, uh, as much light as you can give them and don't let them dry out and don't let them get cold. That's pretty much about it. As long as that soil stays consistently moist and they get enough light, they're fine. These are also one of those plants where they will let you know the very second that they need water and they're thirsty. Their leaves will start to get more limp and a, a flaccid appearance to them. You can just tell right now they're nice and stiff and upright. The plant's hydrated, it's happy, 
if it were thirsty, these would be more folded out and they would just look flimsy and sad. And you give it a drink and they bounce right back very quickly. There's also a lot of variation in the sizes with pseudoranthemums. The black varnish should go anywhere from 24 to 30 inches. Maybe, even, actually, no, this will go 36 inches. It's already about three feet as it is. However, this one gets gangly. So uh, ideally, I probably should have actually cut this back maybe a month or two ago, but the way it was buried back with all the other plants over there, it just, it looked fine. I didn't really notice, so I pulled it out and was seeing it on its own how gangly it was. So doing a mid-season, mid-warm season cutbacks, not a bad idea. So a mid-season cutback, not a bad idea. It's just going to encourage them to branch out, be more full and put out more roots. With this one, I'm going to give it a cut, I'm gonna say right around where they seem to want to bend. So I'm gonna go just above these two leaves right here, and I'm gonna hold onto this. Wanna keep it wet, don't let it dry out, because I'm gonna propagate those. Then for the growth in the back, same thing. Cut right above those leaves right there. Yeah, it's hard to do that, right? Because it looked so much prettier with the new growth on it. These are easy to propagate though, and it really, I should have had a thing of water to put these in immediately. I made sure the plant was well hydrated, but they dry out so quickly. So I would propagate something like this, just like I would a ficus or a croton, where I'm going to want my cuttings to be in leaf sections about four to six inches. So like that, that's fine right there. Try to keep that wet, because I forgot to bring something out here to keep it in while it's waiting. And then same thing for all the others. As long as there's two leaves on there. With the top growth that has the four leaves on it, there are options here. I could go ahead and pull one of these leaves off, can uh, bundle them up and make a cut across so that the leaves are even smaller. The whole point is just that it's going to be hard for this piece right here to support that many leaves. I'm just going to go ahead and snap off a lower leaf. And if it looks like it can't stay hydrated, then I'll go ahead and give the leaves a trim. Uh, technically it should be pulling the leaves from the top because that's supposed to encourage the hormones to move down and get the rooting going. I just really like the way the foliage looks on those top leaves and I didn't want to cut them off. And it's gonna be the same thing with this one. So this will go out into a, a whole nother set of cuttings. I'm gonna do the same thing. Like I said, should be coming from the top, but those new leaves are just so pretty. And there it is, five cuttings that should be sitting in water right now. I need to get those put into the soil right away. Like I mentioned, if you have a rooting hormone, it's not going to hurt to use it. The soil in here is nice and moist, just popping a couple of holes, and I'm going to plop these right down in there about an inch or so, if even an inch or so. Make sure that soil's packed in around there and then water it in immediately, which I will do as soon as I'm done with this video. I'm in a puppy pen right now. It's hard to drag the hose through here. They propagate very easily. The others I have here in a six inch container with a tiny bit of water. With those, I'll be keeping them in a smaller pot. And uh, if I were to be propagating them indoors, I would put a stick in the middle that's taller than the foliage and put a plastic bag over the top to help keep the humidity up. That's gonna be really important when trying to establish new cuttings. I think the two cuttings in this container is ample because then that'll make four stems in this pot and even more when these bigger growths start to branch out. I don't necessarily even know if I need to propagate the others. I'm pretty satisfied with just the one plant, but I have them, so I'll go ahead and do that later. Yeah, not as much fun to look at now, is it? Because <laughs> all the pretty foliage is cut off and down there in the bottom. And the other thing when I do cuttings on a plant, period or repot a plant period, whether it's a sun lover or not. I usually, depending on the time of year, like to make sure that it's getting less light than it normally would. So this is going to go back into a spot where it's only going to get morning sun and it'll be filtered light throughout the rest of the day because it, you know they have to put their roots down there and really set up to deal with full sun conditions when they've been all cut up and torn apart. I have seen several sites talk about these plants not liking to be moved around, like to not even move them in and out of the house. I, that has never been my experience, but I haven't tried the black varnish before with the one I had years ago, which was an alatum, I believe. It was a beautiful plant. It was a lower grower, more like a ground cover type. I never, I don't know, I never had that issue. It never really seemed to care if it was getting moved out. It only seemed to care if it was getting enough moisture. That was pretty much it. As long as it was getting enough moisture, it seemed fine. And I, of course, always made sure it got the right amount of light, but they can take variable lighting, so. You can do with that what you want. So I would say indoors, it'd be a good idea to give these plants as much light as possible, especially if you want them to continue putting out their more dark foliage. A lot of pseudoranthemums have some really neat variegation and some fun, really interesting foliage. And usually you need more light to get those colors and patterns. If you want things more subdued, then you can back it off on the lighting. I'll have these under grow lights that are going to run for about 12 to 14 hours a day. If I were keeping it somewhere in my house just near a window, I'd probably want that to be a south 
facing window and uh, it to get light throughout the majority of the day. Again, to help maintain the color and the growth and because the poor thing's just been cut and everything. I don't want this to have to struggle in any way. So it's going to need that energy to get rooted. In the house, maybe a couple feet back from a window so the light doesn't have to be directly on them because that can magnify the light. Yeah, the biggest challenge with them indoors really is going to be more related to watering them. Like I said, they'll let you know when they need to be watered. Yeah, that's it. Just kind of a pointless chatty video about the black varnish pseudoranthemum. Follow the vlogs throughout the winter time to see how it's doing. It'll be interesting since I got this pulled and repotted kind of late. Probably should have done it a couple weeks earlier. I just, it completely skipped my mind about how it was going to come out with a really shallow root system because it was in that pot that's full of palm tree roots. So that was just, that was just an oopsie. But hey, I have lots of cuttings to hopefully make up for in case it doesn't go through the winter well. What are some of your favorite pseudoranthum varieties? So many fun ones to pick from, different sizes, shapes, colors, and then some variation, of course, with their growing preferences as well. What are some of your favorite varieties? You've been growing them? Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions. Always appreciate it. Like I said, this wasn't really a care video. It's just my experience with this one thus far, what I plan to do with it in the future, and then what I remember from growing my last pseudoranthum, which was years ago. And then of course, what I looked up online, which was a really mixed bag of inconsistencies that were not adding up with my experiences growing them. So I don't know. We'll see how it does, right? Okay, I need to get this plant out of the light, give it a heavy drink with those cuttings in there and get those other cuttings potted up. So I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.